Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Ruth. So today we'll be doing Magic Gathering Top 10 River Cards. And now, at number 10, we're gonna start with this list with nothing really fancy. It's Luxa River Shrine. So I didn't want to do any creatures. I really wanted to try to stick my best to River Alone cards. So as you can see, this one's from Omnicat. It's a common going for just a whopping six cents on the market at the time of this video. Basically, you can gain one life, put a brick counter. You gain two life, activate this ability, and there are three more brick counters. So Cost three mana and one to activate it. There's really nothing too special about this card, but I did have to put some river cards on here. So now, at number nine, we have You Come to a River. It's from Adventures in the Forgotten Realms. It's common going for six cents on the market. And the reason why it's at number nine and number 10 is because it's an instant spell, which only costs two mana. It says return target non land permanent to its owner's hand, or target creature gets plus one until end of turn and can't be blocked this turn. So that's a really kind of cool effect, especially with two, because returning a non-land permit to its owner's hand is pretty typical for the mana cost. So now, at number eight, we have Rushing River from Plane Shift. It's a common going for 20 cents on the market at the time of this video. And I actually remember using this card quite a bit when Plane Shift came out, but now it's just a garbage card. <laughs> but it costs three mana with a kicker. So sacrifice a land. So you may sacrifice a land in addition to any other cost as you play this spell. Well, okay. Return target non-land perm to its owner's hand. If you pay the kicker cost, return another. That's the reason why it's at number eight is because when you sacrifice that land, you can actually do two. So it is kind of considering it's an okay card. So now at number seven, you have this fun little card, Meandering River. It's from various sets. It's a common going for 10 cents on the market. And as you can see now, I'm actually starting to reach actual true river cards. And basically, it comes in the battlefield tapped, add a plains or a water. Nothing too simple. It's a really cool card. I like the picture. And now, at number six. Which I thought this one should deserve to be at number six. It's River Delta. It's an Ice Age. Rare, believe it or not, for $2.52 on the market. The reason why this is at number six and now number seven is because blue and black are more commonly used. Basically, it says if there are any depletion counters on Riverdale, it does not untap during the untap phase at the beginning of your unkeep. Remove a depletion counter. So add a island or a swamp, you put a depletion counter on. So it's a kind of like a cheap alternative if you wanted to get one of those too. But nowadays, I would not recommend this card because there's so many lands that could do this ability so much better. So now at number five, we have Bad River from Mirage being an uncommon for $2.70 on the market. And this one is a very unique one because it says it comes into play with tap, sacrifice it, search your library for an island or a swamp card, and put that land into play. So it's not any land card, it's just an island or a swamp. And again, we're talking about river cards, so this is why it's actually pretty powerful at number five. So now, at number four, we have River of Tears. It's from various sets being rare with an average price of $3.57 on the market. And this is one of my favorite artwork cards in all of Magic. I'm really impressed with this picture. I don't know what it is. I just love it. So it says tap it, add one to your mana pool for an island. If you play to land this turn, add a swamp to your mana pool instead. So you can really have fun with this card. It is not better than some, but again, with the river cards, this is why it's at number four. And again, I just love the artwork. So now, at number three, well, we got Underground River from various sets being rare with an average price of $10.87. And basically, like any other river card, uh, it's add a island or a swamp. It deals one damage to you, or you can just add one color. So this is a very powerful card when you don't have an underground sea. So this would be the cheapest alternative. And now, at number two. There's River Glide Pathway from Zendikar Rising. It's a rare going for $8.11. So this river card is new compared to the other ones. And I really like the option on this one because it's either a island or a mountain. But the River Glide Pathway is a river card specifically to this island. I do like the full art for this one. I'm very impressed with this card. I really like lands that have the choice instead of being one damage or tapped. I think this ability is actually pretty strong. So now at number one which is a very unique card. It's Raging River. I say various sets, but it was only released in Alpha, Beta, and Limited. I only have four of them. I actually wished I kept more of them at the time. Uh, it is going for $300 at the market at the time of this video because, well, it's a very powerful card, I personally think, and it has not been re-released. 
So a Raging River only costs two mana for this enchantment, which is surprising. It doesn't say enchant world or anything like old school cards. It says, when you attack, non-flying dependent creatures must be divided as opponent wishes between left and right sides of the river. Therefore, Raging River kind of makes sense. You then choose on which side of the river to place each attacking creature, and attacking creatures can only be blocked by flying creatures of those on the same side of the river. So this is a very, very powerful card. Just because it's old, it gives it that extra value because it's not being reprinted. 100% love this card. It's very playable. I would recommend if you have this, I would put this in decks if you do want to play with it. So I hope you guys enjoy the top 10 and have a good day and a good evening.